everybody and welcome back to the Bumblecast for our very second episode. Yay! Woo! We made it to the second episode. I almost can't believe it. I am your host Ian Flynn and joining me as always is the esteemed compatriot Kyle Krauss. Hi Krauss! Hi! <laughs> so funny thing as we were trying to set up the show and we're you know, typing back and forth, just comparing notes and getting in touch. I was compelled more than once to talk directly to you because, you know, <laughs> there's a microphone and this is how we communicate for the show. And I'm like, why would Kyle not answer? Oh, that's right. Because we don't have the connection running. It's uh, little did you know, it's actually because I'm a huge jerk and was completely ignoring you. Oh, well, thanks for the save on that part. I thought I was just being dumb. <laughs> nope, it's because I am mean. Okay, well. Yes. I, would say, I would say I would use another word, but we're, we're, we're keeping this a family-friendly podcast, I guess. Trying to, but trying to to. To, to. to me, that's no fun, but eh, well, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for April Fool's Day, we'll just take all the censor bars off and go nuts with it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, boy. Welcome to the Bumble... Yep. Thanks for listening, you stupid. <laughs> uh, we spent like 30 hours in post getting different bleeping sound effects over everything. Oh, man. That, would be that almost sounds like too much fun. That would be the best part. <laughs> All right, so I'm a day late, but let me say happy Thanksgiving, Kyle. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you, Ian. And I don't mean, you know, good old-fashioned American Thanksgiving. I mean... The Thanksgiving of glorious Soviet Kazakhstan. Yes. Red and white flies over Patriot country, but we still eat plenty turkey. Mm, plenty turkey. That was one of the things that threw me off when I first moved up here. Is like they start talking about Thanksgiving in October, and it's like we haven't even had Halloween yet. What are you doing? <laughs> you're doing this Z is Z thing and doing things in kilometers, and now this strange and foreign one it's they do their thanksgiving every second monday in october yes so there you go just it's weird but on the plus side since i hop across the border since all my family's in the states i get two thanksgivings a year that's cheating oh it is (laughs) i live the konami code of turkey oh that is cheating you, Up, you, down, you, left, right, bird, bird, stuffing, burp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The fridge is currently packed full of turkey soup and turkey, turkey, and stuffing and mashed potatoes and pumpkin pie. Well, I know where I'm going back to <laughs> this weekend. Oh, <laughs> the turkey soup my mother in law makes. Oh, dude. What she does is after, you know, she carves up the regular bird uh-huh. and we feast upon it for an hour. Yeah. Or everyone feasts upon it for about 15 minutes and I continue for the rest of the hour. <laughs> I'm not a proud man, but that's a good bird. <laughs> yes. She takes the carcass, wraps it in uh, cheesecloth, and adds all the leftover vegetables and just stews it all night and all the next day. Oh, <laughs> and what comes out is just this delicious, thick, probably clog your heart, but who cares? Turkey soup. <laughs> the gravy, the leftover gravy goes into the soup, Kyle. Oh. <laughs> uh, man. 
And I have I I still have to wait another month and a half. What what am I doing with my life? <laughs> Not having the turkey soup. Yeah. That's what. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, so while I'm gorging myself, what have you been up to? Uh, I have not been up to a whole lot. I'm gearing up for Back to the Future Day next week as of Woo! this recording. Yes. Why? Yes. October 21st. I, I'm, I'm a huge nerd. So Back to the Future is like my favorite movie. And, you know, I'm finally, finally going to be the day that uh, Marty McFly came to the future and Back to the Future Part 2. So... Things are pretty much exactly the same. We all put, we all wear colanders on our heads. That's that's a normal thing. I, I maybe it's a statement to my lack of fashion sense, but I really do wish they had those clear plastic ties that Doc Brown had. Yeah. I thought that was fun. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I like I like the eighties version of twenty fifteen. So I it was still, so bright still, and colorful and fun. I still want my flying car. Dang it! No. See, I'm a technophile. I enjoy my gadgets. I will laud every step forward in the progression of technology. Right. But we do not need flying cars. We can't drive in two dimensions. You want to add a third one to that, Kyle? I know. I know we can't. That doesn't mean I don't want one. (laughs) (laughs) Give me the hoverboard first. Let me break my own fool neck. And that's, you know, just me. I'm not damaging anything <laughs> else. You start adding flying cars and they're dropping out of the skies. Uh, Tonight on Evening 6 News, there was another 20 car pile up in the 16th floor of the high rise. <laughs> we do have our we do have uh, self-driving cars, so I figure flying cars would be, probably end up being mostly self-driving if they do happen. In that's real what life. I want. I want me a self-driving car. Yeah. They have to get groceries, have to make a long trip, just set it to go and you can do whatever you want take a nap do some work play a game you don't have to worry about it the car does all the work for you right and supposedly so far in testing they're pretty dang safe Which all, the, all accidents reported problem. have been caused by the other driver not the car exactly exactly so so far so good further the ones that are on the market now are only for highway driving. They can't do inner city driving, which makes a certain degree of sense since there's so many more variables. Yeah. But still. Oh, we'll get there. The technology is getting better and better, so... We can do it. We have the technology. Mm-hmm. Start up the car and goes... <laughs> <laughs> I just want that sound like the... the uh, and Back to the Future... Back to the Future 2 with the DeLorean, the DeLorean's flying sound. It sounds pretty good. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> I might forgive all the chaos and mayhem if all the flying cars sound like the flying DeLorean. Yes. Or if all the flying cars were DeLoreans, I'd be fine with that. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, okay, you sold me there. <laughs> there was one time, long ago, when I actually had a fair amount of money mm-hmm. and just... Google, going on eBay for giggles, somebody had a full DeLorean for sale, and it's like, if I put every cent I own into this right now, I could own a DeLorean. Mm-hmm. That's probably not the wisest investment in the world, but I could own a DeLorean. Their value... Decisions. Their value is going up, so it is an in, a, a decent investment, especially as fewer and fewer of them are out there. Because over time, that's just kind of what happens to cars that are no longer made. They just kind of start disappearing. But there is a certain amount of uh, effort into owning one, from what I understand. They're not easy cars to own. Finding parts for them is difficult. Fixing them is fairly difficult. I've looked into all this because I, too, have gone onto eBay and just, you know, drooled over DeLoreans. This is my dream car, by the way, if anybody's wondering. I mean, I mean, it can't be I, too much. You save a ton on gas because they all come with a Mr. Fusion, right? Right. <laughs> just put the compost down the chute and boom, you're good to go. Right. <laughs> Although Doc did say the car, the engine ran on regular gasoline and the Mr. Fusion was just to power the uh, time circuits. 
I see, and then or the nuclear the nuclear reactor that the thing was equipped with because of course it was equipped with a nuclear reactor why wouldn't it be this is a science <laughs> experiment <laughs> exactly ah uh, but yeah i they're not easy to drive necessarily they're kind of slow they look good but they're slow and most of them are manual so that's a thing <laughs> All these points, and there's still that little voice in the back of my head saying, "But Delorean." Exactly, exactly. The back I to have, the future. God. I, I, I say all these. I've said all these things, and I still think, yeah, I still want one. <laughs> anyway, speaking of ludicrous expenditures of money, let's cover some amiibo news. Go for it. So we put off recording the show for a little bit because I had heard a rumor that they were going to announce some kind of. Um, one of the new playable characters for Smash Brothers. I'm like, ooh, ooh, we need to make this topical because we're you know, recording this fairly in advance so there's time to process it and all. But let, let's see what this new character is. And, of course, nothing materialized because it's the internet and it's full of rumors and I'm an idiot. But somebody pointed out that if you go to the Amiibo compatibility page and you check out the Shovel Knight Amiibo, it's listed for both the Wii U and the 3DS. Yeah, that's now that doesn't necessarily mean anything concrete. I mean, is is Shovel Knight getting a 3DS physical release? No, or, or, no, it has a digital release. Okay, okay, so it could be for that. Yes, it probably it, is. It is, but you know, there there is that one other game with the Smashing and the Brothers with you know dual system compatibility. So it's a possibility. Yeah. It's Actually, a- uh, I believe the Shovel Knight Amiibo was shown, maybe still is, it might have been fixed by now, was shown to be compatible with Smash Brothers on the Nintendo website. So, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. We'll and also, see. Uh, saw a news bit to be, uh, to be, uh, it's hard to me, I've become Porky Pig, sorry about that. <clears throat> uh, news broke today that the Falco Amiibo will be Best Buy exclusive. Ah, uh, Yes. And the Me Fighters are Toys R Us exclusive for anybody uh, who cares. All two of you. <laughs> <laughs> and I went out to uh, Toys R Us the other day because Jax is doing a whole line of Nintendo themed action figures. Mm-hmm. And they're doing the Star Fox crew in the N64 style. Nice. And it's like merchandise for Star Fox? I'm getting in on this. And. As I'm going through, I'm like, oh, I'll just glance at the Amiibo section for giggles. I'm sure they're not going to have anything I'm looking for. Son of a gun, if they didn't have a Little Mac, a Marth, and a couple of Bowser Juniors in the wild. Huh. Wow. And a Dark Pit. I scored the Dark Pit I was looking for. Oh, sweet. It even had a nice paint job. So it's like, okay. And this this Toys R Us usually doesn't have a lot. But uh, the Nintendo section was not only fully stocked, but holy mackerel, I didn't realize all the stuff they have. Like, they've got these little dioramas that are kind of like puzzle pieces that hook together so you can arrange it in different ways for, and they're all Wind Waker themed. Mm-hmm. So you get like a little Tetra and a little Link and a little Ganondorf, and you can put the bungalow next to the evil shrine door if you want to. Yeah. They had a Metroid that was about the size of a softball with a clear plastic outer shell. And that looked really nice. Huh. And have you seen those uh, really tall, I, I don't want to call them action figures at that point, but they're like very large jointed statues. Uh, they had a whole slew of Star Wars ones for a while. Uh, I haven't seen them, no. All right, so it, let's say about two, maybe three feet tall. Mm-hmm. Link, Skyward Sword style. Ooh. You can have your very own disturbingly large link if you so decide. <laughs> nice. And it looked like it was nice quality too. So, you know, this day and age that we never thought would come when Nintendo actually makes toys and we're all grown men without children. And it's like, uh, yeah, this is for my nephew that you'll never meet, cashier. <clears throat> this is right, for, this is this is for this is for me. <laughs> this, I, I am buying this, by the way, for me. I'm nobody else. Whatever. I don't Braver care. Man than I. I don't care. Judge, judge, judge. Whatever you like. I don't care. I also like the fact that you know we do the show, and I lament that Star Fox Zero is right around the corner, and, and then, then the day immediately after, yeah, they announce that it's delayed. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. Oh well. 
so much for being topical. Well, here here's hoping that they're doing that to, you know, tweak the controls or put normal controls back in. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. Um, back Going back to Amiibo real quick, there's going to be a restock of Villager. The Animal Crossing Villager is getting a restock. And that will be Toys R Us exclusive as well. Evil. Yeah. Also, uh, it looks like the Mega Yarn Yoshi might be exclusive to Toys R Us too. Which is weird. Yeah, I thought the exclusive, the exclusivity, mm, all them exclusive things <laughs> were going to go out the window, but I no, guess not. I know they've 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 cranked it up, but it it hasn't been that bad. They've Nintendo's finally gotten their act together and at least gotten enough, almost enough, to cover demand. I went into a GameStop a couple of days ago, and there were still I'm trying to think maybe twelve of the. Uh, retro three packs on the shelf good gracious yeah i know i i figured those would be extremely limited and difficult to find just because they're you know the retro characters that aren't they don't have games <laughs> i mean you would think that folks would just want to buy duck hunt dog to throw it out the window and say gotcha <laughs> <laughs> laugh at that <laughs> really, really, this, really, this, this, yeah this, yeah into the oven true. you go this is true this is true i also saw some uh eight bit classic colored mario amiibos just floating around and i thought those were fairly exclusive yeah i've seen a couple of those too they weren't they aren't exclusive they're just there i just didn't expect there to be so many of them either and i picked one up fairly easily so all right the modern ones though are still bundle console bundle exclusive so that's the most expensive amiibo so far <laughs> okay it's the one i was thinking of then i guess no the, mo- I really feel the like modern this... one the modern one is in the console yeah Packed i feel bad because everybody seems to have jumped onto the mario maker bandwagon and they are just churning out content left right and center mm-hmm. you know i've got unlimited budget i couldn't just pick it up on whim and i looking at it i knew it'd be one of those things that i would play around with it for like a day or two and have a lot of fun and then be done with it yeah. And you can't really justify 70 bucks up here for, you know, that little bit of time. But sure enough, like a week after it comes out, I get a tweet from a fan saying, here, I made a Mario stage in theme and in honor of the Sonic and Mega Man crossover. And it's like, I can't play it. You have done this wondrous thing and I can't acknowledge it. So I'm tweeting my friends going, if you've got the Mario Maker, would you play the level and tell me what it looks like? I need to know. <laughs> Because I feel like a jerk. I could have played it. You didn't tell me. Or no, you were too you. slow on the draw. I, I'm <laughs> well. I am. You know. I don't too much crap going on anyway. My my video game playing time has been kind of limited. What makes are me, you? Makes playing? me sad. What's that? What are you playing these days? Uh. <laughs> what was I playing yesterday? Oh yeah, I I uh, picked up Dead or Alive Five last round. And I played like an hour of that. Okay. Yeah, I'm about an hour into that. I'm a fighting game fan, even though I'm really bad at them. So <laughs> when when they go on when they go on sale, I tend to pick up most most of the fighting games out there. They're fun. Good for good for a few hours of button mashing for me, anyway. So I think I the last one I played was like which one was on the Dreamcast? Was it two or three? Uh, I think two was on the Dreamcast for Dead or Alive specifically. I think so. It's yeah, been so long. I think long. it's two. Not one of the series I followed as closely. All I remember was the giant Hulk Hogan looking fella who had a really easy move to pull off where he would flex and elbow a dude in the face and go, Yoo-shoo! and I would just spam that and piss off my friends. <laughs> and then there was this other Indian looking fella, I think. Mm-hmm. We didn't say much. He just growled and looked angry, and all of his moves involved throwing and breaking limbs. And eventually I had to stop using him because my friend was like, no, this is freaking me out. There's too many bones crunching. I can't play this game. You have to stop it. (laughs) I was playing, I was just, you know, I don't play online or anything really. So I was just playing against the the, uh, AI. And there's one move, like a kind of a weird arcing drop kick that Hitomi does. And uh, she's just like, just do that over and over and over and over and over, <laughs> and then they die, and it's it's all good. <laughs> I 
I remember years ago, this is like second grade or so, mm-hmm. sleepover at my friend's house, and they had Killer Instinct. Ah, on, yes. What was it, the Genesis or was it Super Nintendo? It been in Super Nintendo. Okay. For sure, because it's rare. And that's right, that's right. And they, my friends are putting in all the codes, they're unlocking idle, they're pulling off combos, they're doing all this. They're actually playing the fighting game as a fighting game. Right. And I figured out that if you crouch with Orchid and beat their ankles in with her baton, they can't get in close. (laughs) Like, if you did not time that flying kick just right, you land and she beats your ankles in. And I just about did a flawless victory against idle doing that. Nice. They were so mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, but I'm not really good at technical fighting games, your street fighters, your virtual fighters, your Tekkens. I just I don't have the mindset for it. And mm. I just cannot get it to go for me. That's why I like Smash Brothers. It's, like, mm-hmm. it's not so much a combo as you know who does what. And then you throw yourselves at each other. And maybe there's a blue shell. Yeah, you know, yeah. I I am definitely I'm not good at you know fighting games at all. But I don't know. I just like playing them. I like the character designs are fun for most of them, and I just like to you know sometimes it's cathartic to just you know punch someone in the face or kick them in the face <laughs> or kick them in wherever. It, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> So, oh well, yeah, there's the beating in the face, but there's also the stabbing in the face. He said, trying not to be too awkward in his segue. Anyway, uh, the article that I just saw where apparently there is evidence showing that they might be doing a Twilight Princess HD remake. Ah. I guess kind of in the vein of uh, how they did Wind Waker at the Wii U's launch. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Did you play Twilight Princess? Nope. <laughs> okay. Good, good story. Good, 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 talk. good conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've got a, kind of a love hate relationship with it because, uh-huh. on the one hand, Midna is the best partner character in the Zelda franchise. Yeah. There, there's no debate there. She's just delightful in her sarcasm and sass and penchants for violence. And the <laughs> final dungeon, which, for your sake, I guess I won't spoil. Uh, I've got a save file sitting at the very beginning of that because I love playing through that start to finish. That was one of my most cherished Zelda experiences. Just everything builds in a wonderful way. But as for the game overall, Mm -hmm. I honestly don't remember liking it that much. I've heard, I've heard uh, kind of the same, the same things on it. That it just like there's neat ideas. And, you know, some of the boss fights were neat, but overall, I just, it wasn't my favorite. See, and I've heard, I've heard at least one person say it was their favorite, but that's like one person. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, a HD remake doesn't wow me as much as Wind Waker, because, I mean, Wind Waker was gorgeous before. And, you know, to amplify its animated nature, cool, I'm all over that. Twilight Princess was meant to be that kind of... I don't want to say photorealistic, but, you know, more pretty realism. And, yeah, you can spruce it up a bit, but I can't imagine it would be that big of a jump. Yeah, I'm... The thing is, is that would be a lot of work on Nintendo's part. A lot of development time as far as increasing the resolution of various art assets and everything like that. Wind Waker was fairly easy because everything was kind of just flat-shaded. Well... So At the same time, I've heard that so getting, yeah, getting cell shading to work is deceptively difficult. True. Like if you do it, like, do it right, it looks like garbage. True, true. So, and so, yeah, have you seen anything of uh, Transformers Devastation? Uh, I have not. It is based on the 80s cartoon. Uh-huh. They got back what voice actors they could, I guess the rest are sound-alikes, and it's done by Platinum. Okay, I did see a little bit of this. They do the cell shaded look for it too, you know, to make it look like the old cartoon. Yeah, and I've not played it myself. I've only seen bits and pieces, but oh, that's a pretty looking game. Oh, okay, I'm looking at it now. Whew. Okay, yeah, that game looks good. Okay, uh, Steam wish list. <laughs> uh, okay, I need to log in, but yes, I'm adding that to the wish list. 
I mean, it's a platinum game, so it's got a lot of that very high speed, hacky, slashy, dodge sort of thing. I am good with that. I, I do. But the enjoy gimmick is that platinum games. That the gimmick is because it's Transformers, they freely change into the vehicle form and back. So part of the combo is you know punch, punch, kick, kick, turn into car, run into their face, turn back into robot, kick again. <laughs> okay. And one of the combos I saw, which was absolutely glorious, is you're playing as Optimus Prime, mm-hmm. beats the ever-loving crap out of whatever Decepticon it was, throws him to the ground, turns into the truck, lands on him, peels out on them for like 30 seconds, and then boots him away. <sighs> that sounds awesome. I mean, I've heard it's got a playtime of like three to five hours, but I've also heard that it's got hype replayability, so mm-hmm. might be worth an investment, might be worth getting used, who knows. It looks like it's highly recommended, which is good. It plays kind of similar to Bayonetta, which is also good. I- I'm I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, okay. I-, I think you've sold me on this game. I didn't realize it was made... <laughs> I did not realize it was made by Platinum. If I'd have known yeah. that... <laughs> I don't know if it's their A team or their B team, or at this point, if they've got multiple multiple development teams. But it's, it's platinum. Probably their A team, just because it's a full price, well, near a full price. Mm. It's not a budget title, and it doesn't look like one. Looks really good. Okay, yeah, I'll have to check that one out for sure. So, uh, in other Smash Brothers news this week, there was also the uh, and the latest patch. I don't know if it's the latest for sure, but at this point, but. One of the most recent patches um, contained the data for uh, looks like six character slots, additional six. character slots. Yes, six. I had heard only three. Uh, the article I saw said six. Uh, that maybe that article is wrong. I don't know, but they are just placeholder slots. I don't slots. want them to be wrong. I want more things to spend money on. Yes, I yes. mean I want more playable options. Yes, me too. But uh, did you cast your ballot? Uh, yes, I did. Who did you vote for? Uh, I went for Shovel Knight, and then I went in again and went for Shantae. <laughs> <laughs> the same two I went for last time. I, I think, I don't know if one cancels out the other. I don't know exactly how the ballot's supposed to work, but even if one did cancel out the other, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I, w- I will accept either either or both. Preferably both. I, before I played the game, I was like, is is Shovel Knight getting all this indie attention just because it's got a polished sprites? I mean, sure, it looks kind of neat, but is it really worthy of all the attention it's getting? And then off your recommendation, I played it, and it's like, yes, it is worth every ounce of attention. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Shovel Knight! Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are, people are going to be tired of us talking about it after two episodes, but <laughs> it really is that good, guys. It, I'm, I'm serious. All of you it, out it there, is. all of you out there in the Bumble Land. That's in what we're Bumble calling it now, Realm. right? Bumble Realm, Bumble Kingdom. The Bumble Kingdom. The land of Bumble. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, okay, hey, well, you do live in the uh the uh fortress of Bumblitude. So makes sense. Uh I put my hat in the ring for uh, Dr. Eggman. I don't know, I feel kind of obligated. That and he'd be good. I feel like good. if you basically make him a bigger, heavier Bowser Jr., the move sets are could pretty much be the same. You know, save a little bit of development time, just tweak it. Very similar, yeah, yeah. I could see it. Have the wheels popping out, yeah, yeah. Wheels popping out of the Eggmobile, yeah. It's pretty much the same. Exactly, and then for alternate costumes, you've got classic Eggman and Doctor Nega. You, you need to do this, please. I mean, Bowser and Mario, Link and Ganon, uh, Pac-Man has the ghosts, kind of. They are playable. I'm going to laugh really, really hard if it turns out that they finally give in and they put in Ridley as playable, truly playable. But then they shrink him down to like Kirby size. (laughs) Oh, man. No one will ever ask for anything ever again. (laughs) (sighs) Although Uh, I am holding out hope. This is desperate hope. mm -hmm. But you know when they released the slew of character costumes with K. Rule and Lloyd from Tales of Symphonia? Yeah, yeah. People were all mad because they think that confirms that they're not going to be actual full characters. What if those are the previews? 
what if those were the top ranked and this is just a taste of what's to come? I also saw a rumor of inklings, murmurings of inklings from from uh, from Splatoon getting added. So I will honestly be very surprised if they aren't in there. Just because Splatoon, from what I've heard, is outselling Smash Brothers in Japan. Mm-hmm. And it's the first new Nintendo IP to really, really take off. Yeah. So kinda, if they don't get added in as a full character, I will be surprised. Yeah, I kind of figured. I kind of figured. I kind of wrote them off when the uh, me the me costumes were announced for them, but yeah, it's still it's still possible. It's just that man was desperate for Lloyd to be playable because he just makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That also, would be cool. I owe you an apology, sir. Oh, why is that? Because last episode I asked, "Hey, Kyle, do you play the Tales of series?" Herp a derp. Oh. Completely forgetting that you and my wife put together this four album, <laughs> uh, sorry, four disc long album of remix music. Uh, well, you see. That's kind of like you saying, hey, Ian, you ever heard of the Sonic the Hedgehog thing? <laughs> it's kind of like Mario, but faster. <laughs> it's kind of like. Uh... Hey, Kyle, have you ever water? I hear it's wet. It's rather tasty. Why don't you try it sometime? Hey Ian, have you ever ever heard of air? I hear it 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 helps you live. Have you tried it? So, so it does, and I've been doing it wrong all this time. Oh. Well, now you know. Now I know, and knowing is half the battle. <laughs> well, you know what? I I was I was very kind and did not try and uh, interject that. I I you know my shameless <laughs> my shameless self promotion. My my instincts to shamelessly self promote did not kick in there, so they it, should have. Now I feel like I'm the, just imagine you, know you sitting you know there what? just it's fine. shaking your head, going, Ugh. <laughs> You come to me, Flynn. You say, "Hey, let's do a radio show." Oh, by the way, Kyle, you do all the work putting it together. <laughs> no, but really, so you do. really, I really you remember. think I've done oh, all? You think I've done all the? I haven't done. I haven't done hardly anything. What are you talking about? Now in the second episode, you're making me sound like some bad Brooklyn accent. What's going on, Flynn? Oh, huh? come on, come huh? on, come on, come huh? on. Huh? Huh? <laughs> That's exactly how I talk, by the way. <laughs> your 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 in your your impression is spot on. <laughs> well, obviously, everyone who's listening can tell, can't they? Yes, they can. <laughs> yes. Well, yes, it's true. I I did do that thing. It was it was fun. And it was released back in 2009. And uh, you can go fine? get it at ocremix.org. Yes. What's that? Okay, I, I Say that again because I talked over you. Okay. You can go get it at tales.ocremix.org for those of you who are interested. It includes both music, musical arrangements from uh, Tales of Fantasia and Tales of Symphonia. And it took four years to put that thing together. <laughs> oh, that's people kept dropping out on you. Never again. Never again. Yeah, sure, I'll do this one. Oh, don't you say never again. As soon as that was done, you had three more going on. You know what? Never again for one that big. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's what I well, mean. I mean, you were working on that one for Super Dodgeball, was it? Right, right. That took two years of and me. And that was, you didn't originally have that project, though. You took it over after it was dying, right? Uh, it was in, I think it started about not too long after I started, uh, we started Summoning of Spirits. That started, and it just kind of sat there for a little while. Um, my good friend Wallen, who originally was running it, he sort of ran out of time and all sorts of, you know, personal things I won't get into. But, uh, me and him teamed up to finish it off. Still took a couple of years, but I'm, I'm really proud of that project, especially. It turned out really well. And what other remix projects have you done? And then after that, I did a uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles rock and metal remix project called Cow, a freaking bunga. called Shell Shocked, and it is it's pretty it's pretty hardcore. You guys out there might like it. <laughs> Speaking of Ninja Turtles, have you been keeping up with the new cartoon? Uh, keeping up, no, but I finally did get around to watching a couple episodes of the first season, and I must say, it is extremely enjoyable <laughs> yes it is yes it is welcome to the fold my yeah. turtle brother we just finished watching uh season three not too long ago mm-hmm. and i hate to say it but the season finale was not that great Aww. i mean everything leading up to it was pretty spiffy the first few episodes of season three are all very standalone 
each one is a different homage. Uh, sorry, each one is a homage to a different B horror movie, and they're honestly really creepy. And it was designed because they didn't know exactly how the season was going to play out in terms of production, so they made it very not filler. I guess, but you know, fairly standalone. Mm-hmm. And then once they knew how they could proceed forward, then they moved on with the plot line. But everything was really solid for the most part. And then the season finale was just like it. It felt rushed. It smacked of executive meddling. Aww. And it was like, okay, and now we have the setting for season four. Go. So I don't know what happened, but I'm hoping season four is a little tighter. Um, hoping it's ending. Wraps up a little nice, a little nicer, but hmm. I don't know. Overall, overall, the show is stellar and it's worth watching. I was really impressed mainly with it. I've only watched the first five episodes, and from what I understand, the animation gets better and better as the series progresses. Absolutely, but, but I was really impressed even in the first few episodes of, with the uh, facial animations and the dynamics with those. Mm hmm. April looks a little, well, all the humans look a little funky the first time they show up, but they, they work out the rough edges over time. Yeah, yeah. That tends to happen with the, with 3D animated shows especially, so it makes sense. And if you enjoy that, you should check out Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Amazing Adventures number 5 in December, published by IDW, and read the backup story. Hint. Nudge. Nudge. Hint. Wink. Wink. I'm gonna get it. That's my stamp of approval. I'm gonna get it. That, Yay! That, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I do not have. And then after I do that, you it. can pick up other issues that I don't know when they come out yet. But we'll we'll leave it at that for uh-oh, now. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Hint, 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 hint. Wink, wink, nudge, wink, nudge. wink. Nudge, nudge. You know what I mean? Oh, 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 nice. Uh, I do not own everything written by you, but it's pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> come now, Kyle. I've only been writing four titles over the course of like ten years. Actually, come to think of it, how much would that be? Every single individual issue. Well, I didn't buy them individually. Collections, <laughs> but Good I'm thinking night. I'm you thinking... might have to drop a pretty penny to have a full Flynn collection. That's scary. I'm thinking of your Archie one-offs mainly. Yeah, uh, yeah. You you don't need to grab those. I mean, they are what they are. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. It's weird with with Archie. I find that far more difficult to write than anything else. It's just, just because it's that, you know, certain kind of Archie humor that mm-hmm. you have to nail, because if you go too far one way or the other, it doesn't feel like Archie. This is, you know, all in the context of the book before it got rebooted. But right. I don't know. It's just, it was really hard to find the right voice and the right pacing to do just regular old Archie. Huh. Where I, was it an intimidation factor? Were you like, oh man, this is like a like a seventy year old property. I better not screw this up. <laughs> no, a little bit of that and a little bit of it, it's just, you know, kinda outside of my comfort zone. I'm a little more I guess in tuned with the action adventure dramedy type of thing. Right. Um what did you write for Archie? I, uh, I heard I've something done... about you writing for you wrote Sabrina for a while, is that Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Um, I don't know. What okay, that... Sabrina first. Uh, back in, oh, shoot, when was this? We'll say early 2000s because I have no memory whatsoever. <laughs> uh, writer slash artist Tanya Del Rio was given the job of revamping Sabrina in a manga style. Ah, uh, okay. And that went for 100 issues, and I really liked it. Um, I really thought she did a lot of neat things with it. And then there was a two-part story where... I don't know how familiar you are with Sabrina the Teenage Witch, but the black cat familiar she has, Salem? Yeah, yeah. I've seen the show, so I know that much. Okay, so in various incarnations, it, he's always been some kind of wizard or warlock that was punished by and turned into a cat. Right. Well, in Tanya's continuity, Salem was this extremely powerful wizard who sought to conquer the magic realm. And when he was finally defeated as punishment, he was turned into the cat. And Tanya had this two-part story drawn by Chad Thomas, who's done some Mega Man work, who's currently on Ninja Turtles right now. Love his style. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Great guy. That showed Salem in his youth as this young man seeking out this extremely powerful magic wand. And the idea of Salem as this adventuring, lovable rogue who really is out to do evil things really spoke to me 
So I pitched an idea where we would tell Salem's story from the beginning. You know, who he was as a young boy, how he grew up, where did his desires to conquer come from, and really explore this character who has at his core a good heart, but is not a nice person. You know, where where does he go down the dark path? Yeah. And that was the uh, Tales of Young Salem, I think, is what we call it. Shoot, it's been so long. <laughs> and it was originally meant to be a miniseries that we would hopefully get, it would pick up steam and become its own thing. This big property had huge plans, you know, great overarching stories showing his life as he grew up in the magic realm. Except it got moved from a miniseries to Sabrina number 101 to 104. This was after Sabrina was advertised as ending at number 100. Hmm. So, understandably, sales were kind of bleh. Right. Uh, I don't know if it's been reprinted anywhere. I don't think it has. But if you can hunt it down, it's Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Volume 2, I believe. Numbers 101 through 104. Uh... Young ta- the Sabrina print presents Young Tales of Salem. And- yeah, Magical Tales of Young Salem. I'm there looking, we I'm go. looking right at it. Um, looks like it is available uh, digitally from Archie, so... Okay, perfect. Go hit that. It's cheap that way. Yeah, yeah. Two bucks a book. Sounds, 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 like, a, sounds like a deal. And I've done more Archie stuff. Let, let me go to a handy and dandy website where I have this all listed because it's been so long. You know what that website is, Kyle? It's bumbleking.com. Bumble, Bumble like king like the monarch.com. Bumbleking.com? Why, you might very well be there right now. <laughs> Let's see. pull this up on my slow, slow computer. You have done many a thing. I have done many a thing. Uh, did a story called Reggie King of Fools, which was a small story in Archie and Friends number 153. Uh, that was just Reggie being a jerk to everybody because that's what Reggie does mm-hmm. on April Fool's Day. Uh, did Geek Face Off in Archie number 624, where we had uh, the founder of Facebook a guest star, and he and Delton, the resident geek, go up against each other to design a networking app for the school, primarily because Delton said something to tick Veronica off, so she just calls in all her rich buddies to do her work for her. Nice. And then uh, there was a graphic novel called Archie Babies, which is kind of like Muppet Babies, but with Archie characters. Right. And there was a whole graphic novel devoted to that, and it's a thick book. But uh, I did a small story in there called The Great Lion Hunt, where they go, where they hear about some kind of cat on the loose, and they turn it into this whimsical adventure of hunting for a lion, and it turns out to be a little itty-bitty kitten, and it's super cute and all that jazz. (laughs) But... uh, I made the mistake of going, okay, this is, you know, for very young readers, we'll do simple uh, rhyme, you know, a little iambic pentameter. I'm not a poet, Kyle. I'm not good with rhymes. I'm not good with meter. (laughs) Why I decided to do, what was it, 10, 20 pages of frickin' iambic pentameter, I don't know. I don't know why I did it. (laughs) Now now, now I'm curious and want to read it. If if you do read it and you go, that's a bit of a stretch, that, that was after hours of staring at the screen going, why don't you work? Here, here's here's the thing. I'm not particularly picky when it comes to poetry. In fact, I'm not really a big fan of poetry at all. So I'll probably read it and be like, yeah, sure, that sounds fine. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Just, it's, uh... it's poetry. It's, it's, it's not... It's your own interpretation as far as I'm concerned. I don't really think there's necessarily a specific form to poetry. I guess I guess iambic metameter would be a specific form, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. E. Cummings can do the deconstructionist thing. I kind of flail at the page. (laughs) Please rhyme. (laughs) But uh, uh, anything about... I was gonna say, at least you write. When I open, when I open up a word processing thing, I just sit there and stare at it and go, "Uh, what?" <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the neat things about the Archie Baby story, though, is um, working on the Sonic book. I've gotten to work with a bunch of the artists that I grew up reading and you know idolizing. Yes, but. By the time I got onto the book, Art Mulhenny, who did a ton of stuff in the early days, had moved on to do other work. 
Yeah. Uh, I got to work with Art Mahoney to do this Archie Baby book. Oh, nice. And since he does that very cutesy, very round style, it fit perfectly. So it's like, hot diggity, I've gotten to work with pretty much everybody I've ever wanted to work with that, you know, had used to work on the book. I think the only one I'm missing at this point is Manny Gallen, who, from my understanding, has kind of disappeared from the industry, which is too bad, because he had some really nice stuff when he worked on Knuckles. Yeah, didn't he do the... Uh... I might be thinking of someone else. Um, the uh, Metallic Madness. No, that was Patrick Spaz. That's uh, was it Spaz? Okay. Yeah, Mecha Madness. Okay, who wrote, who wrote Mecha Madness? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Mecha Madness. What to say? Metallic Madness. Am I thinking yeah, of the Sonic CD words. Zone? Okay. Anyway. Go ahead. <laughs> um. Oh shoot! I know who wrote that. I know we talked about it uh, a couple of years ago at uh, at SDCC. Hold on, I'm looking this up because I feel like an idiot. That's okay. I can't remember who wrote it. <laughs> Mike Gallagher. There we go. Mike Gallagher. Okay. Yeah. As soon as I hit search on Google, it's like Mike Gallagher. There we go. Yeah. Mike Gallagher wrote and Patrick Spaziante drew it. And I had the extreme pleasure of meeting him at New York Comic Con one year. Mm-hmm. Spaz, I mean. Right. And this is when we were debuting Mega Man. And he's doing sketches. And he's way, way too hard on himself. Because we're sitting there and somebody says, can you sketch me, you know, Sonic and Mega Man shaking hands? And he's like, all right, I'll give you a shot. I hope it's okay. And it was like watching a laser printer. Just, <laughs> and suddenly there's these perfectly crisp lines and it's just Sonic and Mega Man. And it's like, how did you do that? It's like, I don't know. It's not that good. It's like, Patrick, that I would give a limb to do what you do. Your off day is better than I could ever achieve. Man, Spaz is brilliant, even if he doesn't think so. He's really good. And he's um, a really nice guy, too. Uh, that reminds me, actually, since we brought up Mega Madness. I saw, uh, like, last week, I think, a couple weeks ago, maybe, uh, someone drew a... Uh, ah, here it is. Mecha Madness, um, Mecha Madness Sonic versus Mega Man. Ooh. It's I've pretty, not seen it. It is pretty cool. You're going to have to link that in the video. Yeah, yeah, well, I'll definitely do that. But, uh... Yeah, it's pretty bad to see uh, to see Mecha Madness Sonic again facing off against Mega Man. That would have been cool. We haven't seen that Mecha Madness. We haven't seen Mecha Madness Sonic in a while, so whatever. <laughs> would have been would have been a little awkward all of a sudden. Oh hey, Mecha Madness Sonic, what's up? <laughs> and all of a sudden he's just there. I still love that design for him though. Roboticized oh, yeah. Sonic. That roboticized that, Sonic. That was that was awesome. And the roboticized Knuckles. Uh, yes. And you got to really love the story because. Even if you can poke a million holes in it, oh yeah, it just it has so much fun with itself. It's Sonic as a killer robot with laser cannons, and Knuckles has magnetic super arms. And who cares? Just look at that! Oh, it's so pretty. As a kid, I was freaking out. I was like, I was like, oh man, why is this continued in a, in a special issue? I want it in the next one. Now I have to go out and buy the special, the forty eight page special, just to finish it. And I did. I remember when I was uh, <laughs> ordering some early Archie stuff, I was actually shorted, I think it was the Knuckle, Sonic and Knuckles special. Mm-hmm. So I contacted them saying, you know, I missed out on this issue in my order. Could you please send it along? And not only did I get that issue and a duplicate of what I had already ordered, but Mecha Madness was in there. I'm like, what is this? I didn't order this. I've never heard of this. Well, let's see what it is. Oh, oh that's what it is. <laughs> Oh man, I'm, I'm just the few I'm comics just... I read till it fell apart. It's just yeah. studying every single panel. Yeah, I did that a lot back in the day with with pretty much all the Sonic comics because it was a whole month between every issue. I I, I had a lot of time. <laughs> it's a lot of time, you know. A lot of my old issues yep. have the cover fallen off, or it's not none. Of, I don't think any of my issues are missing any covers, but they have all come apart. So much for the resale. Yeah. Oh well, I'm not planning on reselling any of this stuff anyway. I'm just gonna so let it pile. Of... I'm just gonna let it pile up around me until I until it all collapses in on me, and then I can <laughs> then I can then I can die happy. <laughs> Speaking of the Sonic book, uh, the show comes out on Monday, so this will already be in stores. Sonic the Hedgehog number two hundred and seventy seven will be the latest issue out. Uh, continuing our Adventure through the Shattered World Crisis and on the accelerated path to finally wrapping up this storyline that's been going on since the reboot. 
Mm-hmm. 277, that's, is that issue two of this particular story arc, or is that... No, nah, it's, uh, the lead story is standalone. It is the triumphant return of Lupe in her all-new wonderful that's form. That's right, that's right. In the On the cover, I saw her, and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> As designed by editor Vin Lovello. And the backup story is part one of three of the next story to be written by Aaliyah Baker. And it is the return of the, as the fans call them affectionately, the Deer Sisters, Clove and Cassia. Nice. I'm there. I'm getting it in the mail, so of course I'm there. But still. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I still need to get caught up on Sonic Universe, actually. That's the only one I'm behind on right now. So I uh, believe we're two parts into The Silver Age, which is artist Evan Stanley's first foray into writing the book. Yes, yes. I have those two parts sitting in front of me right now. I should get around to reading them. Uh, I only have 276 for Sonic. They're usually a little slow about mailing me my subscription. So, Or sometimes they just don't. <laughs> are we are we allowed to mention that? <laughs> hey, I, I'm I'm a freelancer. I don't handle anything in the office. Okay, okay. Well, I know. I'm just I just I don't want to get you in trouble. <laughs> I don't want to get you I in trouble think... by complaining about Archie's distribution center. <laughs> Archie's Ar- whoever Archie uses for distribution. I don't know. I don't know if that's. Uh, I don't think head. I'm going to get in trouble unless I start saying, "Oh yeah, they're stupid." No, it's no. <laughs> Well, they might take that out of context now. Look what you've done. <laughs> Kyle, with me going yeah, out of the context, it, it's more you know shameful towards me than anything else. True, true. All right, all right, fine, whatever. All right, Ian, I think it's time we get into some Q&A. Ooh, Q&A. Q&A. A little bit of A, with a little ampersand in the middle. Yes. We have plenty of questions. All of them directed at you. Nobody loves me. <laughs> That's okay. The podcast is early. The podcast I'm sure is... sure you'll get all sorts of questions in time. I'm sure I will. People questioning my existence. Maybe maybe you shouldn't do that. <laughs> get the whole existential crisis. Oh, God. Kyle, are you a Kyle? <laughs> really? Deep down? Oh, jeez. Uh, I don't know. I have long asked. <laughs> I can't figure it out. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Melodin asks, How involved have Sonic Team slash Sega been in regards to Mighty's connection to the Chaotix past the rewrite of the universe? Or even Knuckles' Knuckles's connection to them. Knuckles is a hard name to say. <laughs> it is hard to pluralize. Yes. Um... They haven't, insofar as I haven't given them, them reason to. Um, it's pretty clear that Iazuka san doesn't consider Knuckles Chaotix part of the game canon, but I'm kind of working under the assumption it's canon to the comics universe. Mm-hmm. So we're doing the fun little tap dance of what can Ian not say, but still imply and get it past all the people looking at it. As far as I'm concerned, Mighty already knows the Chaotix. They had grand adventures together, and Mighty does his thing, the Chaotix do their thing. Um, when we will ever get to put that in print, I don't know. But that's what I'm working under right now. Okay. You haven't... Has, Mighty hasn't even shown up to, after the reboot, has he? Yeah, he did. Uh, he did? he okay. had a four-part story where he got a throwdown with the Werehog. Oh, that's right. Oh, God. Holy crap, my memory is really bad. <laughs> oh, man. That particular issue was drawn by the indomitable Tom, uh, Tyson Hess, who is just freaking amazing. Yes, I remember now. I do remember now. And if you get a chance, look up his original book that's being published, I believe, by IDW right now called Diesel. Uh, I was following it when he was doing the very early uh, passes at it. He since reworked it heavily, and it's now getting published. So good for him. He is awesome. Go check it out. That is awesome, man. Gosh. All I can, <laughs> all, I think all I can remember right now is like the the, the champions arc for the, well, that the Sonic be, the I, Fighters I, adaptation. Ch- which go ahead. Yeah, uh, that one. Diana Skelly's artwork on that oh. was just freaking phenomenal. Oh god, it's beautiful. I love that freaking story. I want it in like you know, 
hardcover collection. It's it's so awesome. I was just like, holy crap, this is a Sonic the Fighters adaptation? This, Ian, you are a genius. <sighs> and bringing back Breezy. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, wait a minute. This is, wait, this is the character from Adventures, right? I had to go look it up to be sure because I actually forgot her name. And uh, but, bringing but, Breezy back really opened my eyes to another facet of the Sonic fandom. I mean, I knew people mm-hmm. remembered Adventures of fondly. Yes. Um, it was never my cup of tea, but, you know, folks enjoyed it and good for them. When I was like eight years old, Adventures was kind of my jam. I preferred yeah. I preferred Sad AM, but Adventures was fun when I was a kid. Sure. What I didn't realize is there seems to be a small group of folks that are just as passionate about adventures as anyone else is about set AM or underground or X, like hardcore mm-hmm. to it. Like they were mad about Breezy's redesign. Okay. <laughs> they are, they were mad that we were playing coy about whether or not she was a robot or a cyborg or something, which I'm not confirming or denying at this point just because I enjoy the tease, but yes. people really, really were far more into it than I would have thought, because, I mean, it's Adventures Of. It's the comedy show. It purposefully has no plot. I I distinctly remember a long time ago when I followed the fan community a lot more was people actually, a lot of people actually liked Adventures because it was kind of reflected a little bit more of what the games were, which was Sonic and Tails going on adventures. Sure, sure, sure. So, also rather than... Eggman rolling around mostly naked with jewels spilling out of his belly buttons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Eggman... Robotnik in that show, though, is... He's hilarious. He's... I don't know. He's, I still love that. I still love that incarnation of Robotnik, especially. He's quite a reputable despot, wouldn't you say, <laughs> Kyle? Bingus! <laughs> what do you think? That was a weird we like it! It's large! That was a weird reaction. Heaven help me, I'm quoting YouTube poops. Anyway, uh, next question. Move on, move on, move on. Let, let's move on. The real, the real FTA ask asks, who is your favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, and why is it Donatello? That's a funny way to pronounce Michelangelo. <laughs> you want to get that look in? Donatello, Donatello is my favorite Ninja Turtle. Oh, well, good for you. You're wrong. Yeah, I know. It, Michelangelo is the best. I know. My girlfriend well, would agree is... with you. Michelangelo. Oh. I love Michelangelo, though. He's like He's very close for me. Go ahead. Yeah, I've, I've always loved Mike. I distinctly remember being like eight years old and turtle mania had gripped the nation. And we went to some department store because it was published in the newspaper that they were going to have a new shipment of figures. And by God, I was going to get that complete collection. (laughs) And all I was missing was Mikey because he was sold out everywhere because everyone loves Mikey. Right. And some poor clerk carries out the big old box, puts it in the middle of the floor there was like this mosh pit of people around him barely <laughs> containing themselves. And he was like pointing at kids individually saying, which one, which one I come up there. I'm terrified because this is not the kind of shopping experience I have ever experienced. He looks at me, which one Michelangelo, which one orange one boop in the box. Here you go. Next. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I got my mic. And just prance on off. But yeah, that, that was a bit crazy. Man, that's like um, Amiibo, the Amiibo situation, 20 years later. <laughs> it's almost like, <laughs> it's like exactly the same. It's cyclical or something. Yes. I don't, know. I don't know. I've always liked Donnie. First of all, he's got the purple headband. Purple is awesome. And he's always just kind of spoken to me as the nerdy guy. So. Oh my god, I just had an epiphany. What's up? Kyle, what colors are Bumble King? Uh, green and orange. Hello, it's Michelangelo. Green and orange. Oh my god! <laughs> we have come full circle. Oh, 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 it's it is, it is now. <laughs> it is time. It is time to become one. It is, it is time to become <laughs> one with Michelangelo. 
the Bumble King and Michelangelo must become one. I don't know how that works, but it has to happen. It's just like a fusion of spirits, dude. Dude. Oh, man. Dude. Dude. Cowabunga. (laughs) Nowadays, it's Booyakasha. Oh, really? Is that where that's from? Yeah, apparently the voice actor would say, okay, just come up with some nonsense phrase, and he screamed, Booyaka Shaw, and that became the thing. The I think it's somewhere in the second season, they introduced Mondo Gecko. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's voiced by the voice actor for Michelangelo in the first live-action movie. Oh, really? Mondo Gecko's catchphrase is Cowabunga. <laughs> they don't say Cowabunga anymore? No, it's Booyaka Shaw now. I don't know. I'm 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 old school. I, I prefer Cowabunga. I don't know. Maybe I just have to watch it and I'll get into it. Well, that's what Mikey says in the episode. He's like Cowabunga. I don't know, dude. That sounds kind of old school. I know. I like old school. Like the entire intro sequence is one gigantic love letter to Ninja Turtles of the past. Mm-hmm. Like the song itself is more or less a remix of the '80s theme in a uh, kind of funky rap way. Oh, it looks fantastic. And, I do remember watching that Turtles Forever special, which was pretty freaking cool. But That was amazing. Yeah, that was a little while ago. Love me some Ninja Turtles. And it's funny, because I didn't actually used to like the Ninja Turtles when I was a kid. <laughs> well, that's I'm a, I'm a weird. I was a weird kid, I know. If it wasn't like Sonic or Mario, I wasn't all that into it. It took me a little while. It was like when I was in my teenage years. I was like, oh, okay. The Turtles are actually really freaking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> at least you came around. At least you saw the light. Yes. Yeah, I was. I was definitely a, a weird kid in that respect. I suppose I'm still weird, but maybe not as much. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on to our next question from Death Metal Rob, which is a great name. <laughs> hey, it's descriptive. He's Rob, oh, yeah, and he's Death Metal. Or I'm not arguing. He likes Death Metal. I don't know. Uh, he asks, will we ever see the old character designs again? Not a fan of Sally, Bunny, and Antoine's new looks. No, the new designs are there for a reason. They're to make them look like Sonic characters and not, here are the furry cartoon characters we threw in with a Sonic show. Or rather, the furry show that we threw Sonic into to sell it. It's, <laughs> they're Sonic characters now. That's that's how they're going to look. Right, right. Sorry you don't like them. I can't really do anything about that. I really like Sally's new design, actually. I don't know. I just like the 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 looks of, the looks of the new characters, especially on the three D rendered covers. Who did those? Who's that? Uh, that's Raphanite. That's right. That's right. Oh man, I I really like that uh, that look for them. The three D rendered covers are awesome. Oh, they're absolutely gorgeous. They mm-hmm. take a ton of time to produce, but they are well worth it. Yeah, I don't usually go for alternate covers, but the uh, number one, Spark of Life, with uh, 3D rendered Nicole, my Rafa Knight. <laughs> I had to do it. I had to do it because, well, Nicole has like, quickly become like my favorite freaking character in the whole book. <laughs> oh, that whole purple thing again. Oh, yeah. It's all that purple. I'm, I'm always down with the purple. There's a storyline coming up that I went to the editor and said, hey, you know what would be cool? if we did this like four part trip to cover all done by Raffinite. Oh. And he's like, that would be amazing. It's completely impossible to do because she'd have to start on it last year. And I'm like, Oh, oh I'm but sad. I think he's still game for the trip to cover. So I'm sad. I'm, That's sad. Something. I'm sad. I'm sad. <laughs> I, know. I, I, I gave you a dream and dashed it all in one go. You have ruined my life for the next second. Okay. I'm good again. <laughs> All right, next question. DeLuna asks, DeLuna13, who is the purple guy? The purple guy. The purple guy. The um, Nic- Nicole is a purple girl. Rotor's a purple guy. Rotor is a purple guy. The Grimace is a purple. Uh, Rotor used to be kind of a blue guy. Does that count? No, yeah, no, no. He's always been kind of purpley lilac. Yeah, I, yeah I saw this old piece, old piece of McDonald's promotional art, where the grimace used to be a villain. Really? Like it used, yeah, it used to be hamburger stole the hamburgers, mm-hmm. the fry guy stole the French fries. Yes, and the grimace used to have six arms and would steal the milkshakes. Six arms. Six arms. Do you think grimace is weird looking now? 
imagine it as some kind of octopus blob monster. He became terrifying. Huh. And at some point he got he lost four arms and became just another buddy. Of course, all of those mascots seem to have been lost to time now, but <laughs> they've been, f- yeah, they were, fl- they were stop. flanderized and then completely gone except for, Oh, wait, 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 S- speaking of, okay. I put it together. Go ahead. You know, with horrifying purple things and purple guy, I think it's a five nights at Freddy. Oh, Okay. Because <laughs> there's like some subplot about some child murderer or something being the purple guy. I don't know. I don't play the games because I I, I can't do pop scares. I don't do horror or creepy stuff. Not a fan. Don't like it. Can't do it. I appreciate it for what it is. Yeah. Uh, really cool that the developer was able to do so much with such a simple premise, but uh, not for me. Mm-mm. I'm not going to go near it. Not going to touch it. Yeah, no, I, thank you. I, I'm not really into it either. I've seen a, I've seen a couple of videos of it, and I'm like, eh, not really my kind of, not really my kind of game. Not really the kind of game I want to play necessarily. So, like, I was reading up on a. Uh, well, it's interesting. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I was reading up a uh, on a wiki on what is the fourth game that's out? The one where you're playing as a little kid in the house. I think. I think they're up to number four. Yeah. So like the fastest just, sequel turnaround time ever. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. But I mean, just reading about the gameplay elements had the hair standing up on the back of my neck. I just, I can't do it. Cannot. Mm. Don't make me do it, Kyle. Take it away. I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it no. either. I don't even own it. I don't have it. It's not me. Yeah. Anyway. No. Yes. Enough, enough, enough FNAF talk. <laughs> That's how I. That's how I. What's that? That's pretty much the sound I would make playing it. You know, the first thing pops up. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, that that's just how I read that acronym is FNAF. <laughs> anyway, we have one last question. From a person from from a person named Spin. This right. one this one is uh the main homeland of the Freedom Fighters is West Side Island. Is there an East Side Island? If so, do both islands get into constant hip hop battles? <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. That's a terrible that's a terrible question. I love it. No, that excellent question. Um <laughs> Actually, something that we'll be getting to in the comics eventually. So Mm-hmm. This comes with a big asterisk next to it because it hasn't been editorial approved yet, but this is what I'm planning on doing, and I don't foresee it getting rejected. Uh, the Kingdom of Acorn and Mobotropolis are situated on West Side Island, mm-hmm. but the Dominion of the Kingdom is within a series of islands called the Acorn Archipelago, which includes South Island, North Island, and the East Watch Islands, which are a whole smattering of very small but very tightly clustered together islands. Huh. West Side Island is the biggest of the group. Uh, South Island, of course, is where Sonic 1 took place and where Eggman was initially looking for the uh, Chaos Emeralds. Right. I don't think we have anything that's ever happened on North Island, and East Watch Island has obviously not been addressed yet either. But that's the plan. If it changes... There you go. You had a little bit of insight on the editorial process. Huh. Is uh South Island South Island is are you still considering that like Sonic's home island or homeland I, where he first came from or whatever? I don't know. I you can go that way. Some folks want to stick with the old Christmas Island origin story. I'm Christmas treating it island. as wow, that's I think I've heard that somewhere, but I didn't it is, like hasn't sunk in. <laughs> I don't know, I'm I'm treating him as something of a mystery. He's always on the move and he doesn't really care where he's been, it's where he's going. So that sounds like Sonic. What are you what are you doing? Writing some sort of Sonic the Hedgehog comic or something? As you know, yes. Yes, uh, I am. Oh. Well, carry on then. All right then. That's going to do it for Q&A this week. Hope you guys have enjoyed uh, the questions and the answerings thereof. Uh, if you want to find more 
of the Bumblecast, head on over to uh, bumbleking.com or kngi.org. You will find it there. Or you'll find it on YouTube. Just search for Bumble King videos and uh, you'll find more episodes of the Bumblecast there. As of this recording, you will find only one other episode, <laughs> but that's okay. We will be having Lord, many right. more coming soon. Hopefully. All right, Kyle, you want to give us any shout outs or plugs for the end of the show? Uh, yes. Of course, be sure to go check out the uh, composer of our awesome theme song, Coda. You can go hear his music over at bc.s3m.us. Oh, you can also find him on. You can find his music also over on uh, SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash coda, which uh, you'll find like the latest singles and stuff that he's releasing there. You can stream it all for free and download uh, albums over at Bandcamp. So be sure to go do that. And I think that that covers what uh, my end. Did you have anything else you wanted to add, Ian? Uh, you can always find stuff about me at www.bumbleking.com. That's Bumble like the bee, king like the monarch. Or you can follow me on Twitter at Ian Flynn BKC. I also have a Patreon going on. Uh, it's at patreon.com backslash Ian Flynn BKC. It's Raiders of the Abyss, a sci-fi story where the patrons decide on how the story progresses. Uh, it's very early on, so please feel free to jump on and support me and decide how the story goes. Go support it. Chapter one is excellent. So go do it now. Do it. It has do it now. Do it now. It's uh, get through the get through the Patreon. Do it now. Uh, What's up? Careful, you're starting to turn a Chewbacca there. Oh, you're right. I yeah, I tend to do that. Although wouldn't that be a fantastic crossover? Chewbacca and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Chewie, get to the job. <laughs> 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 All right, that's going to do it for episode two. I'm cutting it off right now. Here on October the twenty, the nineteenth, two thousand fifteen, and we will see you again November second. Take care, everyone. See you later. Thank you for listening to the Bumblecast. Please subscribe to the show and leave a rating and review on iTunes. Find more episodes at bumbleking.com and kngi.org. Bumblecast is copyright Bumble King Comics. Original music composed by Ken Coda Snyder, used with permission. Find more music from Coda at bc.s3n.us. Pay what you want for the intro theme. As part of the compilation album Noise Chan and Nugget Adventures in Chiptune at noisechanradio.bandcamp.com. 